Hello everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Ritika Gupta and welcome to Ritika's Online Teaching Academy. Today I'm going to uh, start a new lecture series on cell, the unit of life. Okay, let me share my screen. Cell structure and functions. Cell, the unit of life. It is lecture one, which includes cell theory. What is a cell? First, we have to understand what is a cell. Cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms on Earth. So all the living organisms on Earth which are living, their fundamental and structural unit is cell. Means they are made up of cell. Not a one type of cell, there are different types of cell. And together a group of cell will form a tissue and tissue will further form the organ and organ uh, different organ system, uh, organ will combine and form the organ system. And then all living organisms are composed of cells on the basis of number of cells, organisms are of following types. So organisms are of two main types. First is unicellular, uni means one, cellular means cell. Then some organisms are made up of or are composed of a single cell only. Second is multicellular, means some organism while the other organisms are composed of many cells. Means they are, they are composed of not a single cell, but they are many cells. Number of cells are is more. Now, uh, first we have to understand about the historical background about the study of cell. Means how the cell was discovered and uh, what are the different contributions done by various scientists. So first, uh, the name comes of Robert Hooke. In 1665, he was the first who discovered the cell. He observed honeycomb-like pattern in a very thin slice of cork. Means in a thin slice of cork, he observed a honeycomb-like uh, structure. And then they coined the term cellulite, which is a synonym of cell. Means a single block or you can say a compartment is looking like a cell. So he named it as a cell. Second it is Antony von Leeuwenhoek. He was the first to ob observe free cells of protozoa, bacteria and red blood cells etc with the help of microscope. So first who gave the uh, term cellulite or cell is Robert Hood. The second scientist is Antony von Leeuwenhoek who first observed the free cells of protozoa, bacteria and red, red blood cells. Now another scientist, Alfonso Cotai, he was the first who observed the living substances in the cell. Means he uh, observed that inside the cell there is a ground matrix which is living in the cell. Next is Robert Brown in 1831. He discovered the nucleus within the cell. So nu nucleus discovery was done by Robert Brown. Next the name of Hugo von Mill and Purkinje comes. In he, what he, they did in 1839, they called the jelly-like substance inside the cell as protoplast. So the living substance which was observed by Alfonso Cotai inside the cell was named by, uh, named as a protoplast by Hugo von Memol and Purkinje. So this, these were the uh, earlier uh, inventions or you can say discoveries, but with the time, uh, the uh, invention of electron microscopy and other advancement in microscopy has now enabled us to understand the structural features of a cell in more detail. So cell theory. So um, whatever the things are, are discovered about a cell, now all those things are formulated in a form of a theory which was called as a cell theory and it was formulated by Matthew Schleiden in 1838 and Theodore Schwann in 1839. Matthew Schleiden was a German botanist. So he observed or examined a large number of plants and what he uh, saw there that all the plants are made up of different types of cells and that form the tissue of the plant. Means plants are made up of different types of cells and a group of cells will form a tissue 
in the plan. So Theodore Schoen, now Theodore Schoen was a British zoologist. He studied different types of animal cells and concluded that these cells had an outer thin layer and this is known as a plasma membrane. So Theodore um, Matthias Schleiden was a German botanist while Theodore Schwann was a British zoologist. Schwann observed animal cells and Schleiden observed the plant cells. So in animal cells, what was the difference between that of plant and animal cell? There is the presence of an outer thin layer called as a plasma membrane in the case of animal cells. So Schwann also studied plants and reported that there is a unique feature in plants called as a cell wall. So this cell wall is absent in case of animals. So this is a distinguishing feature between a plant cell and an animal cell, which is the presence of cell wall. So cell wall is present in plants while it is absent in the case of animal cell. Animal cells are covered by only an outer thin layer called as a plasma membrane. So Sean proposed that plants and animals are made up of cells and products of cells. So what was what were the different drawbacks of Schleiden and Sean theory? So this theory was unable to explain as how new cells were formed. Means they uh, have uh, studied cell in more detail, but were unable to explain that how the new cells are forming. So. Now the cell theory was explained by Rudolf Borchow in 1855. So he explained that cells divided and new cells are formed from the pre-existing cells. So in his language, he called it as omnicellular e cellular, means new cells arises from the pre-existing cells and pre-existing cells, how they give rise to new cells by the division. He modified the theory given by Schleiden and Schwann. And the modified cell theory as understood today is, first point in it is, all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells. And the second thing is, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. So in the previous theory, they have mentioned only the fact that living cells are composed of cells and products of cells. But in the new cell theory, the another point is also included by Rudolf Virchow, which is all cells arise from pre-existing cells. So in medical exams, often uh, question is asked who have given the term omnicellular e cellular. So the correct answer would be Rudolf Virchow. Now modern cell theory. So what now modern cell theory look like? It adds some more points to the original cell theory given by Schleiden and Schoen. So what are those points? The cell contains hereditary material called as DNA, which is passed on from cell to cell during cell division. So as the cell divide, it gives rise to another cells, the genetic material also passed into the new cells. So the genetic hereditary, or you can say the continuity of the species is maintained. All cells have virtually the same chemical composition and metabolic activities. So virtually the chemical composition of the cell means what, what is the meaning of that? In the cells, the uh, biomolecules, the ground uh, fluid, which is protoplasm, is uh, somewhat chemically same. And what are the metabolic, other metabolic activities like uh, respiration, digestion, and other glycolysis and all, all those activities are also virtually the same. All the basic chemical and physiological functions of a cell are carried out inside the cell itself. Means all the basic chemical and physiological functions, they are carried out by a cell only inside the cell itself. Cellular activity is dependent on the activities of subcellular structures. What do we mean by subcellular structure means is that the structures which are present inside a cell, such as nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi apparatus, etc. So cellular activity is dependent upon the activities of these subcellular structures. Okay, next is objections of the cell theory. So what are the different objections? Means once this 
theory was put forward, there must be some errors or drawbacks which it could not explain. So what are those points? The first one is viruses are acellular. Acellular means is not containing a cell, means it is not uh, having a proper cell. So viruses are acellular means they do not have a cellular machinery, but they are considered as organisms in cell theory. Why? So cell theory could not explain about the viruses because viruses do not have cells while they are considered as an organism in cell theory. The body is not differentiated into cells in some organism, though it may have numerous nuclei in them. Example, rhizopus. So in rhizopus case, the body is not differentiated into cell, but that cell contains numerous nuclei. So why it is so? It could not explain. Bacteria do not have a well-defined nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. In bacteria also, there is uh, uh, nucleus is absent and other membrane-bound organelles are also not found. So why uh, they are considered as a cell uh, in the case of old cell theory? So these are the objections of the cell theory. Next is many dead cells are present in plants which have specific functions. For example, vessels and tracheids of xylem are dead cell, but they help in conduction of water and minerals. So these are dead cells and they are dead even then they are doing some functions. So how they are doing if they are dead? So it is it could uh, fail in explaining this fact also. In animal cells of outermost layer of skin called as stratum corneum are dead, but they help in product protection. So according to the cell theory, all the living cells perform function, but stratum corneum is dead. So how it help in protection, it could not explain. RBCs and sieve tube cells continue to live and function without a nucleus. So they are living, but they continue their function without a nucleus. They do not have a nucleus. Even then they are doing their functions. Now the question, as I have already told you, the concept of omnicellular cellular regarding cell division was proposed by Aristotle, Rudolf Burchow, Theodor Schoen, or Schleiden. It is Rudolf Burchow. Okay. So um, it is all about the cell theory. In the next lecture, I will talk about the prokaryotic cell. So for getting video lectures in biology, please do subscribe and like my channel. Thank you.